Beyblade and Dragon Ball Part 5 In this video, I'm gonna carry on the story of my Dragon Ball Super X Beyblade fan manga. If you haven't seen the first four parts, make sure to do so before watching this video so you can catch up to the story. I wanted to dedicate this episode to Akira Toriyama. The world lost a legend. He has inspired millions of people, including me. Rest in peace, Akira Toriyama. Now, onto the video. So, our story continues with a shot of the face of Super Saiyan God Vegeta, looking coldly, but with a hint of frustration, transforming after having experienced firsthand the power of the Dragon Emperor of the Beyblade Metal Fight anime, Ryuga. Hmm. <clears throat> this brat. Never in a million years did I think I'd have to use such a form for a mere human. But now I've realized, this is no human. I could tell with each exchange of fists he was stealing my energy to make his own. If that's the case, I'm ending this now. And as Vegeta declares this, we turn to Goku. He looks on, smiling to Vegeta. Despite seeing firsthand how the previous exchange went, Goku would look on confidently, saying, Haha, <laughs> this feels like deja vu. But if Vegeta feels like he needs to use that form against an enemy, it means this is even more serious than I thought. And as we pan over to Ryuga, the sight of the new transformation that Vegeta holds confuses him. However, when we pan over to Jinga, for the first time in this fan manga, he would be showing genuine anger and disappointment on his face. But who is this anger targeted to? Yeah! No, Ryuga! What are you doing? I thought you had changed. I really thought you had truly changed. You look the same as when you were under the control of the dark power. No, even worse. I know that you would never hurt anyone if you are really yourself. What's happened to you? Huh? What is this now? And as some would expect Ryuga to respond to Jinga, as if completely ignoring him, Ryuga's full attention would turn to the red-haired Vegeta. <laughs> I knew it! You are so taken aback by the fiery flames and the power of the Dragon Clan that you decided to copy it. Guess what? No matter how hard you try and copy me, you will never surpass me! What did you say, fool? You think I am trying to copy your power? Your power is puny compared to what I have. You want to see a true dragon? Then take this! Then, as if triggered by Ryuga's claim of copying his power, Vegeta angrily summons a dragon, made from his own powerful aura, in the same way that Goku did against Beerus. As if wanting to give the Dragon Emperor a taste of his own medicine, and as the dragon rushes towards Ryuga, You wanna challenge me to a dragon battle? Be prepared to lose horribly! And as a response to Vegeta's dragon challenge, like his namesake, Ryuga would summon his own dragon, the powerful El Drago, using his aura. Eventually, both dragons rush towards each other with formidable intensity. As they collide, a massive explosion forms as a result. A cacophony of dragon roars, fire crackling and blast sounds can be heard from miles away. And as we zoom to the foreground, Jinga just stands in place as he is transfixed with the light show. When we look to Jinga, startled is what one could use to describe his face as he just looks on at the ensuing explosion, thinking, now that I think about it, how is it that Ryuga can summon El Drago without his bay launcher, or even his bay? Come to think of it, how can Ryuga fight like this? Without using his bay? Does he not even have his bay, like me? And as Jinka ponders how Ryuga can even possess superhuman strength, speed and other abilities in the first place, when he hasn't shown any before, he remembers his interaction with Goku, 
where thinking he launched his bay, Jenga actually launched himself with superhuman speed. Now I remember. Pegasus. He fused inside me. I felt a little different since then. In that moment, I felt like I was Pegasus. Suddenly, Goku, just hearing Jenga mumbling to himself, turns around. Uh, hey, are you alright? Uh, yeah, I, I'm just trying to remember something. You remember how I rushed towards you really fast at the cliff where we first met? I forgot to tell you that I can't do that usually. However, my bay Pegasus can. And do you know how Ryuga is fighting with your friend over there? In the same way, he can't do that by himself. He needs his Beyblade to fight. He fights with his Beyblade. I guess what I'm trying to say is, I think when me and Ryuga came to this world somehow, I think our bays fused within us, giving us the power and the abilities that our bays once possessed. And if that's the case, Ryuga now has the ability of El Drago Spin Steel, where he could take the energy of a bay and make it his own. Only he's now doing it with a person. In other words, he's getting stronger and stronger as time passes. Goku, hearing these final words, just stands there for a while. Ah! Are you ready for the real battle, so-called Dragon Emperor? Now, gearing for battle, Vegeta commences the third fight between the two. What's going to happen now? Hey, Vegeta! Wait! Huh? But unexpectedly, just before the two hotheads from different universes were about to clash, Goku, in an attempt to stop any further fighting, puts himself in between the battlefield. And clearly, that decision just served to his detriment. What? Kakarot? Why did you... Ow! Ugh. Huh? What's he doing? Did he just teleport over to his friend? What's going on here? Just who is this one now? And it would be clear that Vegeta isn't the only one perplexed with Goku's sudden move. What are you doing now, Kakarot? Are you trying to start a fight with me? I don't know what's worse. You interfering in my fight, or you teleporting straight into my punch like an idiot? Comedically, like in the Buu saga, Vegeta would result to scolding the foolish Saiyan like an unknowing child. I'm sorry, Vegeta. Please forgive me. But I'm here to ask one teeny tiny request. Oh no. No, no, and no. You are not going to fight this chump. This is my fight. I found him first, and I'm ending this. I'm not letting him pull off that magic trick and not go unpunished. Oh, are you sure about that? Well, have it your way. I'll just have to tell Bulma that his mighty prince of a husband just got pegged down by some child. Now how do you think she would react to that story? Uh, uh what? Kakarot, you wouldn't! It's embarrassing enough that you and that blue kid had to see that charade. But Bulma? No, she mustn't know. <clears throat> I didn't know you were so manipulative, Kakarot. Maybe you have some brain in that thick head of yours. But you're still an idiot. But if you don't finish this in five minutes, I'm stepping in, okay? Haha. <laughs> yep, fine by me. And somehow, being able to use the prospect of embarrassment to his advantage, Goku is able to convince the hard-headed Vegeta to swap him in place to fight Ryuga. Speaking of Ryuga, he just watches over the Saiyan's interaction, proclaiming, Well, 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 I guess the so-called Prince of All, what was that again? Insane, has decided to forfeit 
and bring this buffoon to fight instead. No matter. Even if you're as remotely as strong as your friend who fought me, you'll do well in feeding El Drago. So why don't you show me what you're made of? <laughs> you know, you've got some attitude, kid. If you were a Saiyan, you'd blend right in with us. But for your sake, I want to tell you. I'm not just an ordinary buffoon. Seamlessly, in a transition sequence, Goku transforms straight into Super Saiyan God. What? You... You can change the color of your hair too? Hmm. Yes, you wouldn't know much about it. But us two come from a warrior race known as the Saiyans. We are the strongest fighters you will ever meet. And we can transform too, giving us the ability to become even stronger. This transformation you're seeing right now is called the Super Saiyan God. As we return to Goku, he descends down to the ground that reminds us of an iconic scene from Dragon Ball history. That's right, you've proven yourself to be quite strong in your own right. The fact that you pushed Vegeta to this form means you're incredible. That's why I'm starting off strong with this form. That allows me to access the power of the deities themselves. Huh? What did he just say? Deity? Is he trying to say he's a... a... God? Suddenly, as if the word deity set off a trigger in the younger warrior, Raigo would just abruptly jolt, from overconfident to staggered. It seems like the mentioning of gods set Ryuga off his guard. And for the reason? Well, I'm sure we all know. <sighs> so, you're just like him then? Is that what you're telling me? Bad news for you, buddy. Now I'm not just gonna take your energy, I'm gonna crush you into a pile of ashes once I'm done with you! Goku just looks up to the Dragon Emperor, confused. Huh? What's got him so mad all of a sudden? No matter, it's time to see how strong you really are. Jinga, on the other hand, would look on with worry, as he thinks to himself, No way, is that guy gonna fight Ryuga? I know he's strong, but... But this is a bad idea! Don't worry about that clown, you clown. He's going to be alright. It's your friend you'll have to worry about. He's gonna pay for challenging a Saiyan. And wanting to prove Vegeta wrong, Ryuga gets into a fighting position, eager to knock the lights out of Goku. Prepare, my friend, because I'm coming for you! Just as he says this, Ryuga takes off. So fast, all that can be seen is a speeding light. In response to this, Goku goes to his classic fighting stance, the same stance he used countless times against many a foe in the past. And when we go back to Ryuga, we can see him more clearly as he rushes in to get the first hit. Ha! I've got you now! No time to run! And eventually, the Dragon Emperor would soon catch up to the red-haired Saiyan. And for a split moment, both would examine each other's body movements, anticipating what the other's next move would be. <laughs> Who said anything about running? However, Despite the new speed boost Ryuga gained from Vegeta's energy during their fight, Goku would swiftly make a grand move by punching Ryuga's stomach. <laughs> and evidently, the effects of the formidable blow would show in Ryuga's expression, and from the looks of it, it didn't just hurt. <laughs> What's wrong? I thought you were gonna crush me into ashes or something. 
and as if gloating, Goku would just enjoy the moment, his Saiyan instincts kicking in during the midst of battle. However, don't think that this would be a free punch, as the energy from the attack would convert into that same purple dark energy. This time, there's much more of it. Oh, that feels weird. My hand, it's tingling. And Goku would just notice how his hand starts to feel strange upon retracting his fist. But, as we turn back to Ryuga, <sighs> what is this? So strong. In a shocking development, we see, possibly for the first time in history, Ryuga, the fearsome dragon emperor, vomiting chunks of blood. It seems like that punch was much harder than even he expected. Uh, what? Ryuga! Jinga, just watching this unintentional bloodbath from the sidelines, just looks on with a horrified face. In all his life, he hasn't seen anything like this. <laughs> Grow up, kid. Seems like where you come from, you don't see fights like this. I've seen much worse. Ah, uh, wait, uh, are you okay? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hit you that hard. Having his emotional side overtake him this time, Goku looks onto Ryuga with a sympathetic face, as if he were remorseful for not holding back a little. <laughs> Why you? And completely enraged, Ryuga would try his hardest to recover, despite siphoning that energy using his spin-stealing ability from El Drago, he would struggle to speak coherently. Ryuga would quickly glance to his left hand, which was once covered in just dirt and scratches, now being covered with crimson red liquid. Ugh! No! And suddenly, the true realization of what just happened had finally been processed in Ryuga's mind. He doesn't remember a time where he has taken this much damage in battle. Not since. He. He made me bleed. Another god made me bleed? <laughs> Finally, understanding what needs to be done, Ryuga lets out all his pent up rage and power. Now that the energy from the punch has been absorbed, all he has in his mind is revenge. Don't you ever dare touch me again. I'll show you what happens to those who dares mess with the Dragon Emperor. And now, finding new resolve, Ryuga would harness a ball of concentrated red energy. The power of such an attack being unknown to us. And just like a typical Dragon Ball character, Ryuga would send out multiple key-like beams from his hand, all with the intent to kill our beloved Dragon Ball hero. Not wanting to take the chance, Goku, in his majestic Super Saiyan God form, dodges all the key beams with elegant strides, being well adept to perform such moves all his life. But following in from the key beams, a massive spiral beam would erupt from the distance, serving as the main method of damage. Huh? What's that? But not going unnoticed, Goku would catch on to the impending attack, and block with his hands just in time. When we zoom out, a huge explosion can be seen in the sky, as it seems like the spiral attack just landed its mark. 
<laughs> Direct hit. Did you really think that an attack like that would stop me indefinitely? I have to admit, you're really strong. But you will all die in the end by my hands. Does he go to the source of the recent attack? It's revealed to be none other than Ryuga. As we see his hand slowly dissipate the electrifying dark energy he used. When we pan back to the sky, the resulting smoke blankets what is behind, but it takes only a couple of seconds to fade away, until... <clears throat> well, I got to admit, that attack wasn't half bad. If you caught me off guard, it would have hurt a lot. But now, it's my turn. Goku, wanting to return the beam exchange, charges up a dense and powerful red beam of energy. Yeah! And just like Ryuga, it doesn't take long until he launches his attack. But unlike Ryuga, he seems to only launch one beam. <sighs> and infuriated at the fact that his beam didn't do as much damage as he had hoped, Ryuga would clench his teeth awaiting the impending attack as he goes to block it. Dealing devastating damage, Goku's god key powered energy beam hits the ground with incredible force as the waves travel for miles away from the impact zone. And as the smoke clears, we see the effects of the beam on the landscape, with a massive hole being formed in the middle and many rocks being displaced across the terrain. But oddly enough, we don't see any trace of Ryuga. Huh? And shockingly, as if being haunted by a curse, Goku would catch a dark presence looming over him. With speed coming from seemingly nowhere, Ryuga would be able to leverage the chaos to his advantage once again. What? How did you- <sighs> And expectedly, Ryuga would go for the offense and attempt to punch Goku. However, with the quick reflexes he's developed over the many years, Goku would dodge just in the nick of time. Uh, come back here, you! Uh. And once again, Goku would leverage his own insane speed and land yet another clean hit, kicking the Emperor straight in the stomach again. Whoa, that was a close one. He got a lot faster just now. I'm gonna have to end this right away. But just as Goku thinks to himself regarding how he's going to finish the battle, Raigo would just grab onto Goku's leg with insane grip strength. <laughs> now, I have you right where I want you. I'm gonna show you just how strong I am. Even if my opponent is a god, I will defeat anyone who stands in my way. Do you hear me? And, as if on cue, Ryuga would summon the fearsome El Drago, all while clutching Goku in place preventing him from moving, using this opportunity to finish the red-haired deity once and for all. What? When we see closer to Goku's perspective, we understand the true size of this formidable dragon, which was once used to destroy not only the base from the universe it came from, but also the wills of the bladers it fought with. And soon after, the dragon would make contact with the Saiyan god, causing a ripple explosion. <laughs> and upon closer inspection, Goku can be seen with a bit of struggle on his face, as he manages to block the attack once again, but with more strain. Why? Why are you like this? I don't get it. You're incredibly strong and you have potential to become a force for good. So why, 
Why do you seek destruction? Because I want to destroy you! Now prepare for your demise! Alright, that's it. No more playing around. No more games. It's time to end this! And as if a switch turned on, Goku would realize the situation and harness his serious side for the sake of ending things once and for all. How about I show you a real dragon, Mr. Emperor? Dragon Fist! And using a legendary move from the series, Goku would call upon one of the most powerful attacks, the Dragon Fist, as a huge Shenron looking dragon emerges from the depth of Goku's energy. Yeah. And as both fists collide, the shockwaves cause a cataclysmic explosion, the effects of which not only are strong enough to send pressure waves kilometers away, but also are powerful enough to send both parties flying in opposite directions. Falling hard, Ryuga would be sent crashing down to the rough, hard floor with rocks falling out of the vicinity. <laughs> About time. Ah, uh, Wait! Slow down! I feel like I'm gonna fly away! Both Vegeta and Jenga would react differently to the attack, with one being unfazed with the effects of the clash and the other being barely able to withstand the force. And as the collision smoke subsides, we notice Ryuga struggling to get up from the ground. Eventually, he strives to stand up again with great difficulty. No! No! Not again! Not this again! I swear, I will not fall to another god again! When I get my hands on him... Huh? Ha ha ha! Gotcha! And rapidly, as if planning this the whole time, Goku teleports to Ryuga using instant transmission while he's off guard and employs the God Bind, a move that has been used once only against a certain legendary Super Saiyan. Huh? What is this? Why can't I move? And completely perplexed, Rego would just stand confused, unable to move any of his limbs, only being in control of his facial expressions. Calm down, Ryuga. That's your name, right? I'm only doing this for your own good. Right now, you're emitting a lot of negative energy, and you're too much of a danger to let go. But from the moment we started fighting, and from the moment Jinga started talking about you, I couldn't help but notice that there's another side to you. So please, I need to know what's going on. Let me help you. <laughs> Upon hearing this, Rega would not only be confused, but he would be boiling with rage. And as Goku would slowly approach him, Ryuga snaps. Get your filthy hands off me! Huh? And in a surprising move, Ryuga would be met with a gentle yet firm palm on his face. But just what is Goku gonna do? This won't hurt. I'm just gonna feel your mind. It'll only take two seconds. And when Goku reveals his intentions, it turns out that he is using yet another, albeit more forgotten, technique from the past. But what would Goku gain from scanning Ryuga's memories in the first place? And when we go into the mind reading sequence, we catch a past memory belonging to the infamous Dragon Emperor, where we see a bay battle sequence between Ryuga and Kenta from Beyblade Metal Fury. The OG Beyblade fans will recognize this to be the scene 
where Kenta uses his special move against El Drago Destructor in the final survive mode. But just as we remember, Ryuga comes out on top. But as he collects his Beyblade, we are reminded of the minuscule detail of El Drago's face bolt being cracked open. And zooming forward to another scene, we see the moment that Ryuga and Durago, the god of destruction from the Beyblade universe, first interact. More specifically, from the moment Ryuga decides to steal Proto Nemesis's energy in order to make it his own. When we look at this from a bird's eye view, however, we see closely that a lot of the dark energy that is being absorbed is being absorbed directly into the broken face bolt. And just as this is happening, we also see the frame of the Dragon Emperor absorbing the darkness of the Black Sun directly into his heart, almost as if whatever is happening to El Drago is also happening to Ryuga. And yet again, when we zoom over to another scene, we see the moment that Ryuga, looking worse for wear, launches El Drago from his bay launcher for the very last time, in a move to give his energy to Kenta. And soon after, he disappears, just like the events of the series would show us. However, something that the series didn't show us is what happened to Ryuga directly after he disintegrated. And unfortunately for Ryuga, as soon as we observe what happened, all we see is a pair of evil black eyes peering directly above the Dragon Emperor, as if the being that those eyes belonged to held power and control over him. What? What is... And as Ryuga turns to see who, or what, the present belongs to, his vision turns black. Huh? And just as abruptly, Ryuga wakes up on the ground. Mysteriously, with all of his clothes intact, he doesn't know what just happened, or where he even is, but as we look further down, we see a single Dragon Ball on the floor. Ugh! What? Who was that behind Ryuga? It, it looked like a very evil present. Could it be the reason why- <sighs> And just as Goku attempts to process the few memories he was able to extract, trying to put the pieces together, he gets interrupted by a growl coming from the hot-tempered Ryuga. How dare you touch me? I will not allow myself to be in this situation anymore. That's it. That's it. And as if triggered that Goku was able to constrain and have his way with him, the Dragon Emperor unleashes an ear-piercing roar. The pure rage and energy being so strong that while Goku caught off guard trying to figure out the story of what he saw, the god bind seemed to break off like a Kit Kat. I... I will not stand for this! Destroy! I will destroy you! And as if acting like a rogue animal, Ryuga quickly pounces towards Goku not caring about anything except the individual in front of him, going in for the kill. <laughs> I shouldn't have turned my attention away, damn it! And stepping into spring, Goku attempts to get into fighting stance, this time attempting to subdue the violent Ryuga. This isn't looking good, if I don't do anything now then... <laughs> Suddenly... As Ryuga charges in to attack, his punch gets intercepted, in the same way a glove would catch a baseball. It seems like Goku just manages to block his attack at the right time. Or... No! 
No more, Ryuga. That's enough. Haven't you caused enough damage? And in a shocking development, it wouldn't be Goku who blocks the punch, or even Vegeta for that matter. Instead, like the protagonist he is, Jinga Hagane. The same Jinga that once defeated Ryuga in battle, and the same Jinga that helped to reform Ryuga in the past, interjects. And for the first time, like a Dragon Ball character, he would stop Ryuga. Not with a Beyblade, but with his own fist. Ugh. And with pure rage and conviction on his face, Jinka would just say, Ryuga, I thought that you truly changed. Have you learnt nothing? Not only have you caused unnecessary destruction to this place, but you've also hurt these people too. You've turned into a monster. Now it's time to pay. This is the end of the video. If you enjoyed this part and want another, then let me know in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe for more Dragon Ball related videos.